So security boundary is a place in the OS where we divide code and data that's at different trust levels from each other and put a policy in place that we're going to make a guarantee behind. Uh, exam the, one of the clearest examples of a security boundary is the physical machine, that line around the physical machine. And that security boundary, the fact that we're making a guarantee that code and data can't cross that boundary without your permission is what makes it possible for you to surf the internet safely, at least the software that's in our, our control. So Internet Explorer, Office, any net, uh, system services that access the network, all of those are signed up to help defend that boundary so that network worms and malicious attachments won't cause arbitrary code execution as they come from the network onto your physical machine. So those companies, for a security boundary like the physical machine boundary, which says that untrusted data has to be handled as if it's malicious, means that anybody that's writing software for Windows that gets untrusted data has to sign up to protect that untrusted data. The place where that's most clear is in Internet Explorer because ISVs are able to extend Internet Explorer in lots of different ways, browser helper objects and ActiveX controls being two ways. And if they write vulnerable ActiveX controls, if they write ActiveX controls that don't properly handle untrusted data coming off the web, then mal mal malware writers are going to target their software to try to exploit those holes to get code running on an end user's machine. And actually, that's what we're kind of forcing malware authors to do because we've gotten very secure through software development lifecycle of implementing our own software in a way that makes it very hard to, for people to find problems that would allow malicious code to, to get on a user's machine. Machine. So the next thing that malware authors are doing and what we see this happening is targeting these third-party software components that haven't gone through this rigorous security design and life cycle that we've got in place at Microsoft. So they're signed up to help defend that boundary with us and we're making available tools in the security development life cycle process for them to make it easier for them to do that. So end users actually, in ideal world, shouldn't even have to be aware that they exist. I mean, when you're surfing around the web, the fact that there's a security boundary there should be something that you don't even have to be aware of. The part where end user education becomes important is when the user actually wants to move data across one of these boundaries. So if you go to a website and it says, you know, here's some dancing pigs, you need to install the software to see it, that's where end user needs to think, wait a minute, where am I getting this from? Do I trust this? Those could be dancing pigs or they could be dancing pigs that are in disguise that are doing a lot more than just dancing. They're stealing my data, they're infecting my system with the botnet. So users need to be cautious about where they're getting their software that they're moving across those boundaries. Well, so what I mean by software boundaries are expensive is that when we define find a boundary, it has to be, first of all, worth it to somebody. So physical machine boundary, where we're keeping you safe from untrusted data that might want to get into your machine, that's a boundary that's obviously worth a lot, right? You don't want to have to worry about going to the web and every website you touch potentially infecting your machine. But costly, when the costliness comes from the fact that when we design a boundary like that, when we say that there's one there, is that it's a lot of work to enforce that boundary, to secure that boundary. So software development lifecycle is very expensive for us. And then on top of that, if there's a vulnerability vulnerability, a hole in our software that allows somebody to puncture that boundary, we're signed up to consider that a, a very severe security issue. And so we go through a patch release process. And then it's not only expensive for us, but everybody else as well, because they need to go deploy that software. So that, that doesn't mean that security boundaries aren't worth the cost, but we've got to be very careful about where we define those boundaries, because they've got to provide end user value, value to the people using the machines. And we've got to get every all the ecosystem signed up, including IT pros, including other ISVs, to also value that boundary and, and help us defend that boundary. And third, we've got to worry about application compatibility. So if you talk about creating new boundaries, we can create boundaries in places where you think, oh yeah, it makes sense to put that boundary in. But if we're going to break all your apps in the process or cause pop-ups all over the place, then it's probably not worth it right to you. And you'll probably disable it, in which case we've gone to all this effort and expense and it's really not being uh, utilized. So non-IT people actually don't shouldn't necessarily be aware of boundaries, the, the, where the boundaries exist, but it's obvious that they should be aware of untrusted data and untrusted code versus what they consider important. So if they are going out and surfing the web, they should be aware that when they're asked to download something and download an ActiveX control, download a piece of software, that they should exercise caution, that they should weigh the risk and try to use the inform <coughs> information available to them. Where is this coming from? Do I trust this website? Do I trust the author of this program if it's got a signature on it? You know, if I'm doing internet banking, do I make sure that I've got a secure connection to that? web server, which they can see with the lock, all of those kinds of aspects of being safe and helping the OS and helping our software keep you safe are important. And so end user education is something that's just not going to go away, that people need to be aware.